Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at approximate integration, the first rule, which is the midpoint rule. In order to get to that, just let me quickly show you what we did in the previous video, where we showed you that um, Riemann sums, how we calculate Riemann sums is basically the area under the curve, we take a bunch of rectangles, and uh, the way to approximate is either we take the left-hand points, so we get this type of an integral, where you see this x0 here, uh, is at the left end and then x1 and x2, x3 up to x4. So we would use, for instance, fx0, fx1, and delta x times uh, fx0, fx1, x2, and x3. And that would give us this area. And we'd have these uh, four rectangles. So it will be this height, this height, this height, and this height. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, the other way to do this is here so you can see here now we're using the x1 as the the point we're using so it's x1 x2 x3 and x4 and that's what would be used to calculate uh, the area now uh, those are straightforward enough now the the whole idea of approximate approximate integrals basically is to try to calculate this area in a smarter way with which is more efficient uses less points and of course uh, has less error as well. One smart way to do this is instead of taking these endpoints, in other words, either the left point or the right point, the other uh, one way to do this, in other words, instead of um, instead of using this point here versus this point here, okay, one could easily do the following and in fact say, okay, let's do a compromise and do this middle point here. So we take these middle points, okay, these midpoints. So basically what you're saying is that um, you're going, we are going to take, essentially, we're going to take x1, add it to x0, or rather x0, sorry, add x1 and x0 and divide by 2, and that should give us the midpoint. Similarly, we are, we'll take x1 and x2 and divide by 2, and, and so on. And what that'll do is uh, it'll give us these midpoints, and then we can calculate, uh, let's call these, um, for instance, let's call it x1 bar, and let's call this x2 bar. Then the matter of uh, the area would simply be the delta x's into the fxi bars. So that would be basically uh, how we would calculate the area. Right, so let me just put that in and uh, show you that you in a diagram. So here you you can now see what I'm trying to say um, in the in the diagram form. So uh, if we take this area, that would mean so that would mean the area the integral from a to b f x d x is approximated by uh, m uh, n, which is equal to delta x the common delta x into f x one bar plus fx2 bar up to fxn bar. So you can see here, as you see in this diagram, as opposed to before where uh, we could ha we had essentially either you can count from 0 to n minus 1 or um, uh, 1 to n, or you can just say uh, start with a counter fxi minus 1 or fxi. So I'll show you those just here for completion. So here they are more clearly done. So here's the, the left hand, if we use the left hand point, let's call it ln, then i equals 1 to n, fxi minus 1, and the delta x. And you can, by the way, just write this as i equals i to n minus 1, and then just keep this as xi. This is the same thing, actually. But this is uh, a bit more uh, clear if you compare these all, both. Here's the right-hand point, so here you see it's xi. And, of course, the midpoint, you can see the difference between them. So in all of these, of course, delta x is equal to b minus a over n. It's the same here uh, in the left, the right, and the midpoint. All of these delta x's are this, I'll calculated the same way, b minus a over n. Now here's where the dis difference occurs. So here you'll see this is the difference I was talking about. See the xi bar is half xi minus 1 plus xi, which is the midpoint of xi minus 1 and xi, as I showed you earlier. Now, if just in case you were wondering what about here, here the xi's are basically, sorry, the xi are simply um, uh, x0, okay, if uh, either you start with that or it doesn't matter, I mean x0 plus 
um, i delta x okay so if you start with zero then of course that's the first point is zero x zero if you start with x one well, I mean, in this in the the way it's defined here, all of these points are from this formula. But you can see the difference between the two. So this gives rise to the to the midpoint rule, the first uh, method of approximating integrals, which is the midpoint rule. So let's do this example using the midpoint rule. And the way this works out, of course, is that we're going to say this is approximately equal to. So let's uh, use uh, the midpoint rule with five subintervals. So with n equals five, in other words. So it'll be m5 that we're going to try to calculate. So that's uh, in order to do that. Let's calculate our ingredients. First of all, we need our delta x, and the delta x is going to be b minus a, which is two minus one divided by n, which is five. Remember, we're using n equals five here. So delta x is 2 minus 1, so that's just going to give me 1 fifth, okay, uh, which is equal to 0.2 uh, is going to be my delta x. Now the values that I'm going to have, first of all, I have x0 is 1 and x1. Now remember, just for your reference here, xi, uh, xi, first of all, I need the xi, so xi is going to be always the same, which is x0 plus i delta x. So let's first generate our points, and then we'll calculate the midpoints. So the points are, of course, uh, x1 is equal to uh, 1.2, x2 is 1.4, x3 is 1.6, x4 is 1.8 and of course x5 is 2. Now uh, we'll calculate the midpoints so x1 bar is equal to a half into uh, x0 plus x1 so that's going to be equal to uh, 1 plus 1 1.2 divided by 2 so that's going to give me 1.1. And similarly, the other points are going to be x2 bar is equal to, um, it's going to be 1.3. x3 bar is going to be 1.5. x4 bar is going to be 1.7. And x5 bar, because n is going to 5 is going to be 1.9. So now we'll calculate. So our integral is approximated here, as you can see, delta x into f of 1.1, f of 1.3, 1.5, 1.7, and 1.9. And, and as we substitute the values in, basically, remember, it's 1 over x. Your f is 1 over x. So it's going to be 1 over 1.1 plus 1 over 1.3 plus 1 over 1.5. So we'll end up with this. The delta x is one fifth, as you as you can see, and then you have all these, and that's approximately equal to 0 0.691908. Now, of course, we can calculate this integral exactly. Uh, the integral uh, one to two of one over x is actually equal to ln two minus ln one, which is equal to. So it's equal to this 0.693147 ongoing, because remember long one is zero, so all we're looking at is the letter two. Now you can see the approximation doesn't seem to be so bad. Uh, at the third decimal place, we can see at the third decimal place here, it's one and here it's three. So that's not a bad approximation with only five points. So uh, that basically is a simple example of the midpoint rule. And in the next video, we're gonna continue with the trapezoidal. We'll stop here, thank you.